single year the show grows exponentially as far as the, the amazing little pool of talent that happens on our stages. We live in a fantasy world and we're able to have these, these beautiful, beautiful puppets come to life on stage and it just makes this whole new universe possible and it's a, it adds a layer of storytelling that I don't feel like you see very many other places and, and I love it that the puppets dance with the dancers and they fight with the fighters. One of the reasons why I really enjoy puppets is because there's a tactile nature to them that allows other people to suspend their disbelief in a completely different way. I'm in love with texture. I'm inspired by texture. I'm inspired by ways to tell a story and to make it feel like you're there. I'm also inspired in ways that you tell a story and it's, it's like an echo of a thought that you're trying to get. And that's where the story begins. Yeah! <laughs> I'm Brian Forrest and I'm the captain of Team Sparkles. <laughs> we all grew up loving puppets. At Labyrinth, we had the unique opportunity to bring our characters to life and to tell a story that's never been told before. I am so very fortunate to have an army of dedicated artists, sculptors, painters, operators to help us every year to bring these magnificent puppets to life. My name is Carolyn Ferris. I'm the lieutenant for Team Sparkles. Puppeteering being that it is a 3,000 year old ancient form of storytelling, here at Labyrinth, we utilize that tool to tell our... Last year, we created this five-piece earth elemental. We call him Cole. He was just imposing. He was, you know, the life force of the earth. And this year, he's coming back. He's fighting for his homeland. He's fighting for his turf. And he is going to uh, be laying waste, as only a demigod can, to some dark elves. We're building a new large puppet, and it's going to be using some things that we've seen in our dragons and, and some of our other puppets where we're going to do a multi-part, multi-puppeteer character that is very symbolic of an element, and this time we're going with the element of wind. Uh, Sephir is a creature that to me is the god of clouds and wind and air. Uh, he's an elemental. He is a celestial being. He's a very kind but powerful creature who has, you know, the strength of the mighty winds. We're about to put this a thingy and that a thingy and go the sucky thingy to make the thingy the out of the thingy on the thingy that we do. No, we're about to back and forth. sucking something down over top of the form, but instead you're actually using 14 miles worth of pressure of atmosphere, pressing down on something, creating a hole underneath it, and allowing that weight of atmosphere to fall over top of it and press it flat. But that's like school. Mm -hmm. 